right from the beginning when I started doing this work overseas in 1996, that was always my intention. There, there's no, it, it's absurd to try to come in to bring a bunch of highly qualified professionals into a, a population that's been devastated and to pretend that we are going to do the job of healing those people. Mm -hmm. It makes sense if we can train many hundreds or even thousands of people in those areas that over time they will do the job if they're committed to it. So right from the beginning, my work has always been to teach other people to do the same thing and then make it available to those with whom they work in whatever setting they happen to be in. If it seems obvious to me that, it, that it's helpful to me and it's been, this approach has been helpful to other people we've worked with here. If I go with an invitation mm -hmm. to the people we work with, whether it's the Ministry of Health in Haiti or the uh, Ministry of Education or the Catholic Church or the Voodoo Healers, and I go respectfully and I share what I have with them, then if they like it, fantastic, then it will happen. If they don't like it, fine, we won't do it. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think it's partly uh, that I'm willing to do it. Mm -hmm. that I believe that it will be helpful based on my own experience and that I'm not trying to enforce it on other people. Sometimes I have the image uh, of, of, of a party. A party? A party. <laughs> and I'm inviting people to the party. And the party is about us living our lives the way we feel we should live them in accordance with our sense of our highest possibilities for uh, helping ourselves, being of service to others, and enjoying every moment of our lives. So that seems like a pretty good party. <laughs> and I think that's what, that's part of what attracts people. Uh, maybe something else, I'm, I'm pretty sure something else is, I do, uh, it's not like I tell other people to do it, I do it myself. And I act, I hope, authentically in offering it to other people. So that people are able, if I'm able to take the chance doing the drawings or doing the shaking and dancing, mm -hmm. then other people think, well, you know, if he can do it, maybe I can do it. And, so, and then that spreads. And as we work in a particular place, that spirit gets communicated to other people by people whom they know. Mm -hmm. So it's not here in Haiti, it's I'm doing, yes, I trained the original group, with our international team. Now we have a Haitian team, and you've seen they're, in their own way, they're kind of like I am. You know, mm -hmm, they're sort of yeah. exuberant, they're having a good time. They love these kids. These kids, they regard, you know, there may be thousands of children, but in a sense, they regard them as their own children, as the children of Haiti. And they share with them their own joy, their own satisfaction, their own self healing, and help, want to help the kids do the same. And people pick up on it. talk about leadership yeah, and then leadership using power distance behavior you when you are a leader so it's uh, culturally you, we, you have the power you can do whatever you want but leadership is not that to be a real leader you need a vision mm -hmm. you need to gather people around the vision mm -hmm. it, it's not a, a vision like a fake vision mm -hmm. Like traditional leaders, mm -hmm. you know, to gather people and sometimes people uh, do not know exactly where to go. They follow somebody, they follow a leader for, to anywhere. Mm -hmm. So to me, uh, a leader needs a, a clear vision about where to go, about the goal, about the objective of the nation. The nation of Haiti, I think they really need a real leader who can gather them who can understand to and who can listen to them like Rogers, Carl Rogers said that you need to listen first so we need that 